Subaru is sending me a 2024 Solterra electric vehicle, an SUV by the way. It is designed to go off-road, well a little ways anyhow before it runs out of juice. So let's see what the price is on this. I was told the price starts around 45 grand, but this one has a lot of stuff on it. So it's a bit more. As we can see, charging $890 for white metallic paint. Charging for paints, and you gimmick all car makers are doing them. Mercedes started that some time ago, and the last Mercedes AMG I had, they charged $3,700 for basically the same paint. Go figure. You think everything would be standard at this price, but they're charging $187 for floor mats, $147 for a cargo tray. Uh, shouldn't that be standard? Come on. Really? And with shipping, there's the grand total. Here are the EPA guidelines, which never made any sense to me. I understand EPG for gas, not for electric. I'll let you figure that out. Here's the safety ratings. The good news, this is totally made in Japan. It means the quality is going to be a bit higher than Japanese cars made elsewhere. Speaking from experience, just an opinion only. So here it is. I do think this is a pretty nice looking vehicle. Here's the rear shot. Shipped it all the way from the land of Lincoln, just for us. Here's a side view. Some people don't like the black cladding, I do. In this video, we're mainly going to cover items that other reviewers left and did not cover. For example, what brand of tires are they giving us? Like car companies are putting cheapies on to save money. These are Japanese bridge stones, no complaints there. Second thing we do when we get a vehicle is check and see if there's a spare tire. Nope, just a charging cable. I do like this floor mat though that's ribbed the way it should be. And third thing we do is take the headlights out in the dark and see they perform. That's a separate video we posted on YouTube. We'll have a link for that at the end of this video so you don't miss anything. All right, the batteries produce 215 horsepower. It supposedly has a maximum cruising range of 222 miles or 227 miles, depending on the system. I household 240 volt system. They say it takes nine hours for full charge. Using a pay-as-you-go system, around 30 minutes, get 80% supposedly. Other testers going from 5% to 80%, clean 45 minutes. I think you can do general math for every two and a half hours driving on the freeway, you're going to need about an hour to stop and charge. That's the way I'm looking at it. This is not a long distance cruiser, of course, most EVs are not. The problem with the electric ranges that you see listed in the advertising and the car magazines, they test these in perfect weather, mainly in California for the car magazines. And what happens is when you take this into a very cold climate or very hot climate, the range just drops. And how much so? We're going to find out here because all this week we have a heat wave going on. Outside temperature is 112 to 117 degrees as it is right now. So we're going to take this out in the heat, air conditioning going full blast, and see what the maximum range is in those conditions. So here's where we stand. The car was charged over 200 miles. After delivery, it was delivered with 169 miles. You have to have at least 50 miles on it for it to go back so I can drive it without running out of juice. Gives me around 119, 120 miles of driving before it needs recharging. The question is, with this 115 degree temperature we have this week, can I get the 120 miles with the heat and running the air conditioner full blast? Probably not, but how less are we going to get? And that's what we're going to find out. It was starting at 34.25 miles. So it should be interesting to see how long it's going to take you down to 50 or maybe 49 miles. Before we take off and do some driving, let's examine the cabin a little bit closer. I don't see a storage bin over here, a glove box. Just an airbag. Climate controls were easy to use. Nice camera system. Another camera system here. 
I think this is optional in the lower priced versions of this vehicle. And I've noticed this slick black plastic is like a mirror, reflects everything, like the sun in your face at certain times of the day. Very annoying. Why can't they make these in a matte finish? But just the way it is. The drive mode control gives you eco, normal, or power mode, and X for mainly off road, better traction. Under this glossy mirror, we have a phone charger of sorts. The rotary shift knob. I don't have a problem with these. I kind of like them actually. The big problem on the previous models, the steering wheel was blocking the instrument panel, so they did a flat top on the steering wheel. It kind of works, but you still have to raise the seat, and then the bottom of the wheel gets rubbing on your legs. It took me a lot of adjustments, like a couple of million, I'm exaggerating, to get the perfect driving position. I'm only 5'9", so if you're extremely tall, extremely short, I don't know how you're going to fit in this. You might want to sit in one for a while before you buy it. The steering is very quick and responsive. Very pleasant to operate. Acceleration is brisk. Lots of bottom end torque. No complaints there. The ride quality is very comfortable and the brakes are very nice with a nice firm feel. Handling in corners is very pleasant. Let's take some speed bumps. Here's number one, around 20 miles per hour, very smooth. Potholes there, soak them up pretty good. Another speed bump. Pretty comfortable. One thing I've noticed, it's getting towards 5 o'clock in the afternoon. It's gone from 117 to 114 degrees outside. Not cooling off much. While well, these air-conditioned seats do a decent job at cooling off your body parts. But the main air conditioning unit itself with these vents is really struggling to cool off this cabin with these crazy temperatures. If you live in other parts of the country where it's under 100 degrees, you might be okay, but we're not doing too good here. And keep in mind, we have a vehicle with white paint, which reflects the sun quite well, but if you get this in a dark color like black, <laughs> no, don't do it. Not in a desert environment. You'll roast alive. Of course, that applies to black paint in any desert environment, regardless of how good the air conditioning is, frankly. I want to take this off-road to get some idea how it performs, but with these tires, or intended for the street, and limited range, that's just not going to happen. Most of our driving is we want 50% expressway, like we're doing here, and 50% heavy city traffic. In the heat, hot, hot, hot. So far we've driven 112 miles. And we used 125 miles of range. That's a 9% loss using the air conditioning, which is very surprising. Normally it's around 25-30%. We did very, very good here. I'm impressed. That includes our road test. If you want to see the headlight night drive test, here's a video link coming up. Click and watch. You might as well. You're already here. Two videos for the price of one. Free.